So it is September, which means we are getting into the peak of our hurricane season here on the Atlantic coast. Hurricane season is from June 1st to November 30th, typically with late September being the most active. We've also had a couple of bigger, more devastating storms in more recent years. In fact, we just had a close call with Hurricane Dorian. It's my first hurricane season. It's uh, something different. So basically, we just put together a little bit of information that we know or I know from experience and that people have helped me learn about kind of getting ready for a storm, how to kind of get through it, and what to expect afterwards for people who are new to hurricanes or for people who kind of just don't really have an idea of what it's kind of like when we're gearing up for one. Personally, I have lived in Florida my entire 27 years. I have never evacuated for a storm. Considering the last few storms we've had and the damage they've caused, though, I would be kind of considerate of evacuating for anything more than a category two now. The last few I've had to go through were a little bit scary, so. The biggest thing when you're evacuating, I think, is to make sure that your home is as prepared as you can have it and that your vehicle is prepared as you can have it. Make sure you have a plan and you know your routes. Make sure that wherever you're going, you're not going to be in a potential later path of a storm where you might get stranded or not be able to get back home. Also, don't, don't abandon your pets. Please bring them with you. They're part of the family. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fortunately, um, most of the time with storms, you will have a little bit of prep time. However, some storms, as we've seen lately, are a little unpredictable. So even if you plan on staying put, have a backup plan for evacuation because things can change rapidly and you may not have a whole lot of notice to get packed up and get out. Some of the home prep stuff you can do in the few days of the week before the storm, make sure you do your laundry. You're gonna need them fresh underwear. <laughs> yes. Okay, so again, this is my first hurricane season. You know, when when Dorian first kind of popped up, I was like, oh, you know, this is this is kind of I'm not I'm not freaking out, but I I could see where it gets a little scary. Then when it started ballooning up and became, you know, what eventually turned into a Category Five hurricane, and it was barreling right for us, I needed some new underwear. Not afraid to admit that. <laughs> Make sure you gas up your car and get gas for your generators. Also, let me say something. Be prepared. Don't, don't, I'm not saying don't be prepared, but give it a little time to develop. When they're saying it's a tropical cyclone that's gonna hit two weeks from now, don't run the city out of gas, please. I have to get to work. Please simmer. This one may sound a little <laughs> silly, but clean and organize your home. You will be glad you did, regardless. Make sure that your yard, your porches are cleaned and everything is secured. You don't want debris that's gonna fly around and break windows or hurt people. Get your insurance papers in order. Make sure you know where everything is. Make sure you know what you have to do in case you have damage. Get sandbags if you need to. Prepare your windows if you need to. Take care of your pet's needs. They're going to need any medications they're on, whether or not you're evacuating or staying home. Make sure you have enough dog food. I that's a big thing for us with two giant dogs we need to make sure we have enough dog food to last a week if we need it fill your water containers trim any trees that you may have around move your vehicle to a safer spot if you need to if you can fill your tubs if you need to basically just be prepared to be without electricity and potentially water for at least a few days if you plan on riding out the storm at home there are still things that i consider essential for a survival kit three days at least of non-perishable food items, three days worth of water. Make sure you're also considering if you need it for food prep, if your pets need water, if you need it for sanitation reasons. Please, please, please do not rush out and buy gallons and gallons of water in plastic containers. You can buy reusable ones for super cheap on Amazon. Fill your own five, seven, 10 gallon jugs at home. Typically, I will get one case of bottled water just so we have something to drink and use for the dogs if we need it, and then use reusable containers for everything else. We usually don't lose water, though. I don't think I've ever lost water during a hurricane, just electricity. Other things you will need, flashlights. Check. Candles. Matches. I recommend stormproof matches. 
I recommend having batteries galore and as many battery operated things as you can have. Radio and clock comes in really handy. You can get storm updates and have a little bit of entertainment maybe on this. We found some little battery operated fans. You can find much larger ones obviously, but even these small ones come in real handy when it's 95 degrees outside and you haven't had electricity in three days. These rechargeable phone battery packs come in really handy. Most of the time they also have a light on them, which is awesome. And I found this one on Amazon that once it runs out, you can use these solar panels to recharge it, which I think is awesome because so yeah, you don't know how long you're going to be without power. Most of the time, it's at least two to three days. Other things that I would keep handy, medications. If you're a smoker, make sure you have your cigarettes because <laughs> you may not get to a store for a few days. Ice. If you have a cooler, put some ice in it. Anything you may need to keep cold, such as medications. And again, first aid kits. Just make sure you have something available in your home. And even if you plan to stay, make sure you have one in your car so it's ready to go. Okay, so we thought um, a fun thing to do would be a Floridian expansion to the survival kit. Kind of what I have learned, we have learned, is important when you kind of know what to expect and you know you're just going to have to ride it out because you've been here before a lot. I'm going to go ahead and ask you, you've been here about a year now. You've experienced Florida in all of its glory. What do you think would be first on this list? It's got to be the alcohol. <laughs> Gotta have your fun while power's out, you know. I'm getting my float in case in case things get real, in case we gotta float away from this thing, you know? Okay, those things are important. I have been with you without power for maybe three hours and he doesn't handle it well. A charged iPad that is loaded down with downloads from Netflix. <laughs> I say more alcohol. And uh, we know Netflix isn't gonna last forever and you're gonna be alcoholed up. Condoms, because if you're not planning on a hurricane baby, safety first. Absolutely not. I want that hurricane baby. Moving on. <laughs> Again, you are gonna be without power for a couple of days, so I highly recommend board games, books if you are a reader, cards of any kind. Another thing that I have found super helpful is to have an air mattress here in case of evacuees that want to hang out, hurricane parties, and if it gets too hot to sleep in your own bed without air conditioning. I am a heater when I sleep, so that'll definitely come in handy. Another thing, obviously, gotta, you gotta stay up on your snacks. No. Chips, you know, just more, more chips. We've already kind of dug into these a little bit, but marshmallows are a good one too. You know, if you're trying to uh, be a little healthy, you got your uh, granola bars and your pastries and, and things. You know what I found in the pantry? Mm. MREs. They have MREs just laying around. I've, uh, I've never tried one of these, but uh, I'm definitely, I definitely want to try one of these. Super weird that we have them. Super, super weird, but uh, good, to ha good to have in, a, in an emergency situation. And of course, more alcohol. The more the better. Typically one of the harder parts of a hurricane isn't the actual storm, which doesn't last all that long, it's the after part. The biggest thing you have to do is just be patient and stay off the road. Let EMS and repair workers do their jobs. It's harder for them to work and get everyone back online and with electricity and get people back and forth where they need to be if they're going around traffic along with all the other things they're dealing with. Plus power lines will be down, trees will be down, lights will be out. It's just a dangerous situation. Don't go out if you don't have to, stay home. Make sure you photograph and document any damage you may have and know the process and get the process started for your insurance if that's necessary. Be kind and help your neighbors out whenever you can. We're all in this together after a storm. Make sure you stay safe. If you are out and about, avoid any standing flood waters, any water that isn't normally there. Don't drive in it, don't walk in it. If there are down power lines, don't drive over them, avoid them. I know here in town, they set up a lot of comfort stations after storms where people can go and charge their phones, get showers, get some water, get food. So if you have a community that does that, make sure you know where those are. A lot of places will just turn on community Wi-Fi so you can come and use it to contact your loved ones because that's another thing you kind of need to be prepared for is your cell service may be down for a few days. So now that you've kind of seen how people 
get a little bit when the anxiety is up and people are preparing for a storm and you've kind of seen how we have to prepare for a storm what are your thoughts on all this no i mean it's 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 kind of weird you know living in michigan and arizona michigan has blizzards and arizona has extreme heat or monsoon season but i mean it is nothing you know living in a place where a natural disaster like this is very <clears throat> real each year it was it was kind of weird um seeing the entire city start to vibrate you know, it's not like everybody's like running around panicking, but you can you can tell that tension is high and you can you can really feel it in the atmosphere. It's sobering. So I hope this is sort of helpful. Let us know your thoughts. We will actually drop some links in the description below to some preparation websites just to get a better list. Obviously, we kind of had fun with this. We also mentioned how we kind of had a close call with Hurricane Dorian, but the Bahamas were hit very hard. So we're also going to drop a link or a few if we can find them for if anyone is interested in sending aid to the Bahamas and how to go about doing that in the best way. We thank you in advance if you can help. Here's fingers crossed to a quiet remainder of hurricane season for us here in Florida. We got our chips, we got our alcohol. I threw the condoms in the garbage. We're good. Well then, until next time. <laughs> Later.